Hey, welcome to another Hogwarts 4D video. Today we're jumping in with a, a request. Someone asked in our comments if we could do a... Oh, look at me with the royal we. Uh, someone asked if, if I could do a real-time 3D modeling video, and I thought, hmm, maybe I could do that. Probably be pretty boring. I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do with it. The astronomy tower is still a work in progress uh, as of this recording. But then some new stills of this area dropped into our collective lap, courtesy of the Wizarding World official YouTube channel. Got this really cool view of this whole area here that uh, confirms some of what I suspected was the case and also provided some new information about what exactly was going on here. So I've got all of my references up on my second monitor, which you won't see here, and we'll do a little bit of real-time modeling and see, uh, see what happens here. Um, first thing that I want to do is, uh, well, well, we'll warm up by adding a couple of these flambeaux that are, that are along here. There needs to be one that gets added right here at this corner, and then another one lower down over here, uh, which is where the rocks will eventually form this opening, almost kind of cave-like it looks like from the, from the photo, although still can't quite tell what the opening looks like. But for this, we're just going to get to do some copy and paste, which is always nice. Um, or in Blender, uh, the software I'm using, it's not exactly copy and paste. It's actually going to be uh, duplicate, which is Shift D. Uh, I'm going to escape so that I get rid of that transformation, look at it in top view, move it over, going to get it right here on the corner. This is a lamp that I really, or a, a flambeau that I really should have realized was there because it actually shows up in. Uh, in our one and only blueprint from, from this film. Um, I've just been eyeballing it with the, uh, with the flambeau rotations in a lot of cases. Uh, it's gotten tiresome to try to get it exactly right, and I figure it's not really going to be very apparent if I'm off by a, you know, a couple degrees or so. Uh, so let's see. This, you know, the, the image is only, only shows so much detail, but from what I can see, looks like it's something about like so. Um, so we're going to go ahead and let that be that. I'm also going to take this black shape on top here, which is actually the flame. Normally it's set to be hidden when I'm in daytime mode, which is what most of my renders are done in. But when I switch it to night mode, it comes alive with a flame sort of material uh, as well as some fuel down at the bottom. Uh, so anyway, I like to rotate those a little bit differently, squash them around a little bit uh, so that I don't get too much, uh, you know, noticeable duplication of patterns in the shape because it's the same basic envelope shape surrounding it. There's this wonky thing I created a few years ago um, with the, the fuel down at the bottom with a different, different material. Um, but because of the way the volumetric flame material works, when I move it into a different position, it ends up looking uh, a little bit different, so I don't have to worry too much about it. Anyway, I'm not sure how, my, how much sense that exactly made, but um, that's what's going on. So I'm going to duplicate... Oh, actually, before I forget, I need to move these. Keeping this whole thing organized is, uh, is important to me, because otherwise things get lost. Okay, so this wall... For Sorcerer's Stone, I kept it in quad east outer wall. Great. That makes sense that I put it there. <laughs> Let's move this one into that collection as well. Castle Meshes, Sorcerer's Stone, South Block, quad east outer wall, Sorcerer's Stone. Great. Um, I'm also going to need to... Let's check that again. So I've, I've linked these to multiple collections because no sense in duplicating objects uh, when they're going to be exactly the same in different versions. So yeah, quad east outer wall, chamber of secrets, and quad building. Yeah, I, I changed my um, changed my organization a little bit a few different points, but that's all right. Okay, I am now linking it to south block east outer wall, and I will also link it in Prisoner of Azkaban to the quad building, if I can find it. There it is, quad building, Prisoner of Azkaban. 
Isn't it funny how when you're watching someone else look for something, it's always easier to see what they're looking for? I don't know if you find that to be the case, but I definitely do. <laughs> um, I'm going to be eyeballing the location of this. Um, you know what? Actually, I don't have to eyeball it. I've got a drawing on here, which should give me the location of the flambeau. Give me the lamp. This is a sorcerer's stone drawing. I can hide my meshes for a moment. There he is, right there. Green, right there, okay. So I'll bring back my castle meshes. And that does look does look right. Oh, you know what? Actually, I'm going to come back to that in a moment because there is going to be... Hmm. See, this is, <laughs> this is why I tend to not do these things in real time because a significant chunk of what I'm just doing here is sitting there pondering the model and thinking, hmm, what's the best way to approach this? I'm not in any huge rush with this project. It's not a time-sensitive matter. So... Sometimes I'm just sitting there trying to figure out the best best course of action. Um, so in this case, what I was thinking about was, well, do I go off of the drawing or do I go off of its relative position in the reference image compared to these windows? And I'm deciding to go a little bit more off of that, um, but we'll see how well they match up. Okay, we're going to rotate this roughly into position again. I really probably should be actually getting these just right, but the reason the reason I'm not is the um, I rotate the flame object so often uh, for the different versions that I can't just copy and paste the um, can't just copy and paste the rotation values. Uh, that'll make sense to you if you've ever done any modeling in Blender. Um, or perhaps in other 3D packages. Uh, there we are. And I'll squash the flame a little bit on this one. Actually, I'll squash it a lot. This is going to be a really, like, short fire. <laughs> there we go. Why not? The wind is different lower down. Okay, so we've got those in. I've got a little to-do list I'm going to cross that off on. Great. Now, uh, next step, this window right here. I don't know why I added that window. I guess I must have thought it was there in one of my reference images, but this new one very clearly shows that there is no window right there. Uh, so it's time to fix that. And looks like I used the same marble staircase tower, Taurus Magnus, Dumbledore's tower, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I used the same one for the first three films, and then why did I change that for Goblet of Fire? I can't honestly remember. Let's investigate a little bit. See, this is what happens when you're working on the same, <laughs> same project for years at a time. I uh, can't believe it's been... Wow, we're getting closer to... what? Did I start this in 2019? I think so. I think early 2019. And then took a hiatus and came back in 2020 during the <laughs> pandemic, uh, which is still ongoing as of this recording. Make sure you get vaccinated, please. Um, let's see here. If you're medically able, that is. Um, south block, Taurus. Okay. So I'm going to select these objects. Take a look. I'm wondering if it's literally just... I think it's just that I took that window out. I think that's the only difference. Because nothing else should have changed. Cool. So in that case, I just get to delete all these objects, I think, right? Yeah, the only one that should have changed, yeah, it's that one. Okay, well, let's go ahead and just delete this one, I guess. And then this one, 
Oh shoot, actually, no, that's, <laughs> that's the opposite of what I should have done. This is what you get for asking for a real-time video, my friends. Uh, let's see, I'm going to undo... Don't want to delete that. I just deleted the one that is missing the window. And the one that's missing the window is the one that I want. I was trying to do this dumb thing where I was duplicating the, this incorrect version from Sorcerer's Stone to all the different versions and then getting rid of the window, which really doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, okay, so let's hide Goblet of Fire for a moment. We'll select this one, which we know is wrong in all versions. I'm just going to move it to my trash just in case someday I realize, oh, actually there was supposed to be one right there. And I'm going to move the window as well. Move that to trash. Uh, by the way, if you're wondering, well, what's this weird interior cylinder? Um, that's just sort of a thing that I've got in there so that you're not looking straight through the entire marble staircase tower, uh, especially if I've got a close camera angle uh, or if it's at night. I don't want to have to deal with um, looking straight through and seeing another window because, of course, we know in real life, quote, uh, there would actually be the marble staircases in the middle. Um, okay, Goblet of Fire. This one now just gets linked back to the south block. Terrace Magnus. And linked again. Linked again to south block. Terrace Magnus. And linked again to Prisoner of Azkaban, South Block, Taurus Magnus. Oh, that's interesting. Actual missions. Why'd I do that? Time to investigate again! My goodness. Let's see. South Block, Taurus Magnus. So what was what here in... Not the actual meshes. So odd. Oh, that's interesting. I honestly don't know what all of those folders or collections are there for. None of those make sense for Taurus Magnus, and none of them have any objects in them. I'm going to delete them. That's pretty weird. And delete actual meshes too, because there's nothing in it. Huh. Pretty strange. Okay. Can you tell I've been digging mostly into <laughs> Half-Blood Prince version lately? Not this version. Uh, anyway, uh, let's check the location of the lamp there, see if it matches up with the drawing. Huh. Yeah, that's Pretty dang close. That's within, I'd say, margin of error of, uh, of what I've been working with. By the way, I've mentioned it in other videos, but I'll say it again here. I'm working with one of 3D Connections uh, 3D mouses. They are extremely handy for, for 3D work. Um, and more so than handy, oh, there's a weird mistake right there. More so than handy, they're just pretty dang cool. Um, yeah, so, okay, so I've already messed around a little bit with this part because one of the other changes that I need to make is I realized all of this was sitting over, like, here, which makes sense considering where it meets up with the wall, except it's actually meeting up with the wall in the wrong spot. <laughs> so that's a little bit of a problem. Um, but the way I moved it over there created an issue with this guy right here. So you know what, I'm just going to do that. Nope, didn't work. Just going to do that. There's all these vertices. There's almost certainly a better way to do what I just did, and it may not even get the job done. But such is life. Oh, actually, no, that worked out. That worked out just fine. Not very elegant, but it'll do. I'm going to end up moving all this stuff around anyway. Uh, because this wall is too far back. I'm not sure how that happened exactly, but uh, the new reference image makes it very clear 
this whole thing needs to move forward like this. In fact, it'll go just about to... Actually, wow, I need to go even a little bit further here. Let's see. I'll, I'll just bring this out here for now. It needs to come out to about there. Because it's right about even with the bottom of this window right here. So yeah, about like that. I'm looking at my units. That's, we'll call that 0.68, which comes out to 6.8 feet with the funky way I do my units. Um, cool. So that's right there. Now I need to do the same with everything else, and then there will be some other adjustments to do. 0.68. Oh, and then this one's got to come out here. All these, okay, for the life of me, I do not know why I didn't do these as an array modifier. I really don't. I'm going to have to fix that. Because this is going to get real annoying. Oh, that's interesting. These have the wrong axes. Wrong rotation. Huh, plot thickens. Eh, screw it. I'm just going to get rid of all these right here. Okay. Um, shoot, what's going to be the best way to do this? Why didn't I do this as an array? I really don't know. Okay, I need select linked object data. And this is going to select a whole bunch of these over here, too, because it's the same type. But I can deselect all of those, which leaves me just with these. And then I deselect all of these. No, that's not what I meant to do. <laughs> Undo. I want to delete all of these. Then I'm going to grab my rotation value here, which is 124.5, 124.5. So now the axes will match up with that wall, which is definitely helpful. Now I go 0 0.68, uh, negative 0.68. There we go. Cool. Now that lines up, and I'm going to apply our array modifier Let's get going here. Okay. Um, don't know how many I'm going to need. I'll just say 30 for now. And the spacing is pretty good. I'm going to try to match this. Let's go 1.1. Actually, this is a relative offset. Let's do constant. I feel like it's just safer. 0 0.1, 0 0.13, 0 0.19, too much, 0 0.17, 0 0.16. Yeah, that looks about right. I don't know exactly how many of these there are, so I'm forcing myself to be okay with just winging it a little bit. Looks like we need to pop this number down to 26. And that'll, that'll do. What else do we need to take care of? Well, for starters, these lamps, or flambeau, torches, they gotta go. I thought there were torches there. There's not. Instead, there are some of these supports or like uh eh, like what's the word it's kind of hard to think while i'm doing this sorry sometimes the words don't come um oh boy none of these are arrayed either why did i do that you know it's funny the things that you do while you're working on this and you just think hey eh, you know what Never, ever going to have to revisit this spot, even though I don't have very good reference for it, and it's conceivable that, like, better reference could come out in the future. Eh, 
eh, just do whatever, see how it turns out. Oh shoot, going in opposite directions. Okay, we'll go like that. And there we go. Now I'll say again, these are going to have to get adjusted because they have to get spaced out against this whole wall here. How shall we do that? Well, can see in the reference image that this one should line up about here. Hmm. Just thinking about the best approach. Well, I know that this is going to have to come out here. Let's see. If I just try eyeballing it, that's a good point. Three, four, double that, negative 0.68. Eh, it doesn't look far enough. Four. Yeah, that's better. This one. Two, which puts it a little further to the right than I'd really like it to be. So maybe, hmm, how do I want to do that? Well, let's try this. How far did I end up moving over? 0.53, looks like it. And then that means this one goes point, uh, 1.06, there we go. Yeah, these also look like they should be higher. Boy, that is interesting. You just never know what you're gonna discover while you're doing these things. Huh. Okay, well, let's do that, because I feel pretty confident about that. Up, we'll go 0.2, so that comes out to two feet. I really prefer to do all this with exact units, exact measurements. Oh shoot, I messed that up too. <laughs> but that we can fix. Um, yeah, I really prefer to do this all with exact measurements, but uh -oh. sometimes that's just not feasible. One. There we go. It should make this 0 0.02. Yeah, there we go. Okay, very good. Yeah, so that's um, hmm. it's very interesting. I think what we'll do now is so move this one in point one, uh, point oh seven, uh, oh eight. Let's try that. Yeah, I'd prefer to be able to do all of this with exact measurements is exactly what I do when I have that option. Sadly, in some cases, don't have that option. And this is one of them. I mean, if you've got blueprints for this area, then please do send them my way. But absent those, I'm left to, to eyeball it a bit, which is okay. It's not, not the end of the world. Okay, there's that. Now, I'm going to start putting in the buttresses, even though I haven't done these windows yet, because that's going to be a good check for me to see if this is actually working. By the way, I can see these windows don't line up. That's 
on my list to fix as well. We'll probably end up doing that in this video. Oh, I can hide these drawings. I don't need those right now. And let's... Do these fit? These don't look quite right. It's probably more like... the No. Not those either. Where do I remember seeing that design? Yes, it really is. I'm just I'm studying my reference image uh, on the other other screen now. A, a few other reference images. Sorry, I'll, well here I'll. I'll be nice and I'll bring these over because I'm going to be staring at these for a minute. So here's a reference board that I had going for this area. This was pretty much the best like side shot we had of this area before. Uh, yeah. Except for... where to go? See, once I get into using these boards a lot, start to become very familiar with where I've put everything, but it's been a while since I've used this board, so I don't remember. Oh, and it looks like actually the image I'm looking for isn't even on here. Well, anyway, here's the reference image that I've been looking at. This is the area in the photo. I've brightened it up a little bit, and that's the original brightness. But you can see here, it's those. And the other image that I want to look at is this one. Okay. Yeah, I can, it's, I think it's pretty obvious why I didn't really catch that there were those buttresses there. I mean, that you just, you really can't see them until we finally got this image, which helps that it's snow time image, makes it a little bit easier to, to see. Well, boy, I could have sworn there were some others somewhere that, wow, sorry, that's a horrifying <laughs> jump through of all these walls. Um, I could have sworn there was another one that looked like that, but I don't think there is. I think I'm making it up in my brain. Nothing in the quad. Um, yeah, so we'll use these, but we'll just severely mess around with the, uh, <laughs> the dimensions, the proportions of it. Duplicate that. Move it over here. Move this so that it is part of our Link building, there we go. What was that angle again, 124.5? Yeah. Oop, I lost it. Come back. There you are. 124.5, cool. Now it's rotated the opposite direction from what I want. That's fine. Rotate it 180 degrees. Move it out here. Cool, yeah, way too big, but we knew that. Okay, moving my reference image back over to my other monitor so that I can look at both at the same time. Sorry. I'll go to, uh, I'll just like put my cursor right there and we'll try scaling it down. See how that looks. Eh, not a bad starting place, actually. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. I think that'll work. Uh, but it does look like I need some sort of Thing, some sort of ledge right around there to catch the snow uh, based on the reference images. 
Start studying again. Eh, maybe not. You know what? I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it like that for now. And uh, we can change it later if we need to. Anyway, there are four of these. Set up an array modifier. Set the count to four. Constant offset. Distance ends up being, well, like that. Let's see, okay, so that kind of almost matches up ish. <laughs> sort of. Boy, this is one of those times when it's just like, you know, there are small inaccuracies, you know, here and there in, you know, bits where it's just not perfectly, completely precise, which is fine for my purposes, except for when all those little imprecisions conspire against each other to make it so it's like, okay, I need to get this window centered over this, but then I also need these four to stretch out all the way to here. Uh, and if we do that, then it's not centered. So yeah, that's, uh, that's tricky. That is definitely tricky. Um, I always thought that these windows up here just looked too uh, narrow. So they're actually going to be an easier fix. They get to be more, more square-like. Boy, it's uh, it's not precise, which I don't like. This might just be a good exercise in going, hey, you know what? Nobody's perfect. Hmm. I have to keep thinking on that. Very interesting. Uh, while I'm at it, I don't need these to be that far down. We can go like that. And then all of this is going to get covered up with rock. Hmm. Sometimes it's nice to zoom out for a moment and just go, Whew. okay. So that does look different. Yeah, so it's a different look that's happening here. Maybe this wall just needs to be further out. That could be it. I really don't want that to be it because I spent a while getting the intersection here just so. But yeah, sure enough, in the reference image, it does look a little different. Hmm. Oh, what fun it is. Yeah, and if we compare the drawings, See how it looks. Hmm. Of course, one of the complications is that that drawing actually isn't fully accurate in some spots, so you can only trust it so much. Okay, think, think, think. Best way to do this. Hmm. hmm. I'm literally just thinking now. This is, again, Real time, be careful what you wish for. You just might get it. Um, well, let's stop working on that for a moment um, because now I know that this fella needs to come out a little bit. Ooh. Uh, 
Okay, what we can do, get my cursor right there. Let's see, this all connected? Yeah, it is. Okay. Um, select all of this like that. Everything. No, let's not do it that way. Instead, we'll move this side and then move the top by half. That is a more better solution. <laughs> Yeah, we'll go about a foot out, which certainly does make it easy to then just go six inches out. And then we can grab this. all connected is okay um what we need to do is we'll select this by faces there we go I move it around see it's all connected there i don't want it connected oh yeah there we go that out one foot great oh and I should elevate this a little bit just to maintain the shape it was in before that's not a great way to go about doing that but there's only so much you can do you know What the heck is going on here? Okay, delete that. This mesh has gotten all kinds of messy right here. So we're going to rethink some things. About like so it's really not going to be perfect Oof, that's I don't know if I can tolerate quite that much imperfection okay let's seal this up right here and then here oh boy this is a really inelegant way of, hand whoops, of handling this. At a certain point, I just, I kind of stopped caring a little bit, which is very freeing. Ooh, there are probably, probably kind of juts out there. Let's see, okay. Another reference image, it's down here. Another one of the new ones, uh, this one.
Eh, I'm just, I, mm, do I want to worry about it? I suppose I do. It's always a delicate balance between a certain degree of perfectionism and a certain degree of just saying, eh, screw it. Who cares? Right now, the perfectionism is winning out. By the way, if you, dear viewer, have made it this far into this, whoops, that's not what I meant to do. If you have made it this far into this video, boy, you are a, uh, you are something else. I, I, I gotta give you, oh, why is that not working? Yeah, to be able to, uh, to make it through this long, slow process, well, I, I commend you. See, that's really Im imperfect because those faces now intersect right there. So if I were to get in real close to the camera and render it, I could get all kinds of artifacts right there. That's where my perfectionism is finding its boundary right now. <laughs> okay, and for this... I really have to say about this part. I'm just getting it all plugged in there. Okay. Well, now hopefully that'll look decent, at least from angles over here. And oh, I should cross that off of my to do list while I'm thinking of it. It's the chimney. My to do list, by the way, is a notepad <laughs> document. Uh, okay. So another thing that needs to happen, I mentioned earlier, is these windows need to move. This one, fortunately, will be a bit easier because the spacing doesn't seem to have changed at all. It's just moving out like that, which looks like about 0.67. Seven and about like so. All right, fortunately, that part is easy. I can cross that off of my list too. And now we're back to the tough stuff over here with. All, all these parts. Deciding the best way to handle it. It's funny, you start wondering, well, at what point are you just wasting time thinking about how to do it best when you could just do it? Something to think about. But of course, if you pull a Nike and you just do it, sometimes it ends up biting you in the some biting you somewhere later on. Um, 
right now I think I just don't care that much. <laughs> um, I think I'm just gonna let it be what it is. Scale that by 1.43. Select linked object data, should be just those, yes, good. comes up and yes you are seeing that correctly if you noticed um, oh where am I boy it's getting messy well I don't know how well you can see it but we're inside the link building now and yeah I've just used a single pane of glass that goes all the way through my interiors are really not fleshed out at all because they're really just not part of the scope of this this whole adventure uh, I'm going to move these up just a little bit more, like 051, no, let's do 05, easy. Whew. Like I said, that's not the, um, it's not the nice perfect way to do it. You look closely, it's not perfectly symmetrical. But you know what? Imperfections happen in real life when you're building real miniatures. They happen in real life when you're building real castles. So sometimes you just gotta say, mm, you know what? It's not gonna be perfect. And that's okay. I'm calling that done. Also removed the window, crossing that off of my list. Um, great. Save my work, which is going to take a while. So I'll fast forward. And boom, saved. Wow, that took a long time. I think that was probably upwards of a minute. And it froze again. Ugh. Yeah, see this downside of a project with this much scope, working on computer that still ultimately is, you know, built for consumers. I don't have the fanciest, craziest system ever or anything. Um, one thing I thought of, I don't think I put this. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so this needs to be linked into Chamber of Secrets. Link building. As well as Prisoner of Azkaban. Link building. Uh, almost forgot about that. And in fact, I should probably do a quick check on my Chamber of Secrets and Prisoner of Azkaban meshes just to make sure that they're not missing anything. Okay, there's Chamber of Secrets. That all looks good. That's got all the stuff that we were just working with. And now if I hop over into Prisoner of Azkaban, Great, it's got everything too. Perfect, didn't miss anything else. Only reason I'm not checking anywhere past there is, well, this whole area completely changed in Goblet of Fire, as we've seen in past videos. Um, so none of that is at all relevant ever again after Prisoner of Azkaban. Um, this area is unique just to the just the first three films. And then it changed forever. Anyway, that took... Uh, it took a while there. Uh, by my watch, we've been recording for almost an hour, and uh, that was just to get this little area done. So yeah, this process is not always fast, um, partly due to uh, limitations of my computer, partly due to the fact that I'm not in a rush. Sometimes I, I'm willing to just sit there and contemplate and think for a little bit. Um, and, you know, sometimes I... Uh, I run into just really challenging issues. But yeah, we'll end today with a render of that area 
Thank you so much for watching, especially if you stuck around all the way to the end. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Check out the other videos, and we'll see you again real soon. Thanks.